one. There definitely were some struggles with the course environment. Um, and it seems like, you know, despite efforts every time to improve the navigation and the look and feel of the course, um, it can still be really difficult for, for participants to make their way in and to really feel comfortable. In this ISWO um, workshop, there were quite a few suggestions that were put forward, and I really appreciated that. Um, you know, one, one person I remember suggested that we call individuals before the ISWO begins, so ahead of, ahead of the start date. And I think that's a great idea, although it's, you know, maybe not practical necessarily. I think it's something that could really um, make that person sort of feel more welcomed and also more comfortable at the beginning of the course. Um, but, you know, having said that, um, everyone did seem to adjust fairly quickly and make, make sense of things. So really it is maybe just a matter of taking time to poke around. Um, I think that, you know, obviously some people have more time than others and some people will need more time than others. So this is just um, something that I, you know, I'm thinking about the kind of thing that um, sort of stands out is, is that there is this tension between building community and <clears throat> either feeling overwhelmed or, you know, perhaps even a little bit annoyed by non-content related posts. Um, Certainly, you know, in the introductions forum, obviously there's a lot of personal information shared and, and that sort of thing, a lot of back and forth, and it was very casual, and it was almost like, you know, walking into a coffee, sh coffee shop and sort of getting to know people before you get down to business. Um, <clears throat> so it's really quite a, quite a mix of um, getting to know who, who is in the course, yeah. um, and really you know, personally, I think that that's a very important component of the ISWO model because we rely on one another, you know, for the full five weeks to, you know, tackle our work together. So it's really important that we um, know who we're working with in that same category of, you know, building community and, and feel, feeling overwhelmed is, um, is just being mindful of um, our contributions to the forums and maybe using other other communication channels for certain conversations and I you know I noticed that quite often people tend to use the forum much the same way they use email and it isn't email and so there's a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one conversations not a lot but you know sometimes one-on-one -on -one conversations happening or um, right. maybe a team is trying to schedule a, a meeting um, and they're doing it in an open forum where other people are listening in so maybe that's not the most appropriate um, place to be doing that and so just really that comes with practice um, but it also comes with just knowing what tools are available. Yeah and also being on the receiving end of those messages I think sometimes that helps because that's the experience of being online is starting to understand when you speak out or write something online who's hearing it who sees it um, you know where where it gets distributed or how it gets distributed. Yeah. So that's it's a good, I think it's a good lesson. It's just, unfortunately, we have so much packed into the time. You know, that's the thing with, with the ISWO overall is that we want people to experience this stuff because that's, that's in fact what it's like for your students, you know, when, when you, when you go out to, um, to teach your first online course or, uh, you know, you, you need to really understand what it's like on the learner side. And so, and so it's not that we need to take away all of these things from the ISWO, we just need to. Um, maybe it's a matter of making people more aware that it's it's intentionally incorporated <laughs> into the workshop. I've just been really impressed with this um, offering of the ISWO, that just the level of engagement and the supportive culture um, that we've seen over the last few weeks. Uh, everyone's been really quick to just jump in and help and initiate new discussions, um, yeah, contribute exactly. resources, and sort of, you know, just gather together and get down to the facilitation and the learning, and it's just been really, really good to watch that. <laughs> the nuggets that I pulled out when I thought back were similar to yours, uh, but this time around, I didn't actually include much in terms of professional um, history. And uh, one of the participants quoted back one of the advice videos from Royal Roads, and, and it was from uh, one of the communications instructors who's really good, and uh, she had said something about you have to establish your competence when you're the stranger in the group. And I guess it was interesting because I had kind of forgotten that mm -hmm. statement. And so that was a, a real learning for me that I here I was I was so focused on the what to me was really important, which was trying to establish that personal feeling, the approachability, making people comfortable 
that first week when they come in and they're so intimidated by the environment often. So I perhaps went overboard because I was thinking, you know, I cut all of it out, assuming as you might, that if they wanted to know more about me, they could ask or or that they might go and, and Google me up or whatever, because I'm certainly all over the web. <laughs> you got I'm Googled up. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's, a, it's a good point, because it was a very thoughtful question, and it made me think again, what is the role of that establishing the competency in terms of maybe that's another way that people have to do it uh, if they want to come in and feel relaxed, mm-hmm. right? So that they can come in and say, these people do know what they're doing. You know, and and so maybe that's something I would look at as to how to do that and still keep that personal touch. The the personal connections that we formed at the beginning have often really helped people as they move through the stress of collaborating on their first mini session activity. Because certainly that model for a lot of instructors who come to us is really unfamiliar. They teach online and usually the only people that are part of that are the if they're at an institution that has an instructional designer or somebody who's going to help them with their course shell, right? Right. But there's no other teacher in there with them and they don't have to collapse. Some people are really unfamiliar with that. So that's a stress as well. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that those personal connections in that first week really help um, for those people that that get into it and they're stressed and trying to work together. Um, I guess one of the second things, the second nuggets that I uh, took out of this one is is how uh, much more participants get out of the experience when they are not only that they're not as stressed by facilitating their mini sessions and that they can engage more with the readings and videos that we provide. Because I think the group that we have now, uh, maybe because they settled in, the majority of them settled in very quickly Mm -hmm. uh, into the whole uh, flow of events in the ISWO. And so they really were digging into some of those readings and thinking really critically about them. And I thought it made the experience of each mini session much richer, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. being able to to think back and compare what people were seem to be deriving from the activities in prior ISWO. So finding a way to to really help them do that a bit more and facilitate that, because this group seemed to do it naturally and um, and seem to also help each other, as you pointed out. And so that whole sense of community, I think, developed. Always um, thinking about the, the value of co-facilitation. You, you know, right. I, and I've mentioned this to you before, that um, I just can't even imagine doing this by myself. <laughs> you know, it just works so well to have two people, um, different ideas, different, notice different things. Um, yeah. It just it just works really well, and and like you said, you know, having two Sylvias though can can get kind of complicated sometimes. <laughs> um, but I really want to make sure we continue with this model going forward. Um, and and you know, really in a perfect world, I think that people who go through the ISWO would then consider taking the um, FDWO, which is the facil- facilitator development workshop online. So it's the it's the follow-on. It's it's a just a two-week workshop, but it's for people who want to facilitate the ISWO. And then um, the idea then would be maybe to team up with an experienced ISWO facilitator um, and have some kind of practicum mentorship kind of format and and uh, you know carry carry on in that direction. So I, I really like to see us um, you know continue with this model of learning together because I think it really works well. Um, and expanding on that just a little bit too is just thinking about different ways of um, taking advantage of what we've done in all past ISWOs, like finding a way to sort of bring that forward and and um, and allow other people to benefit from that. Um, I'm not personally used to working in a closed space, so this is quite different for me to be working in a space where it's just this group and we're not using, I mean, we're using some tools out there in the open web, but, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, and so every you time I, garden. yeah. And every time I see somebody kind of struggling with, um, you know, I'm not sure what to do. I'm kind of drawing a blank with what to do with this mini session. I just think, wow, there's so many great ones that, you know, have happened in the past. Yeah. If only we could show those, you know, as I into what I was, um, some of my nuggets that I pulled out is, is really start to think hard about what to do um, before the ISWO begins. Um, right. Because I, you know, I think that we do a pretty good job of making the expectations clear once people are in the course. You know, the course outline is pretty thorough. Yeah. Um, everything's available. Um, the whole course is available for people to sort of, you know, jump ahead and kind of get a lay of the land. Um, 
Um, yeah, just thinking about what can we offer to people before the ISWO begins and, and you know, how can we support any of that pre-learning that needs to happen. You know, as this ISWO winds down, it's just like, you know, every other ISWO, I always start to think, you know, how can we kind of keep our connections alive and how can we yes. um, continue yeah. to grow our um, resources together? Um, you know, I, I just envision this, you know, somehow... Um, having a space for that to happen. And I'm not sure what it would look like and what people can commit to and what's realistic and that sort of thing. But just, you know, things like the ISW Harvest Wiki. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be great if everybody just continued to, to use that? So. I was thinking, actually, one of the things that I still haven't quite resolved for myself, and I want to see if maybe in discussion with you or, or uh, Grant or some of the other ISW owners, that um, um, in terms of um, the focus on facilitation skills and the idea about the importance of designing the online environment to allow learning to happen. I think we that topic's come up in the previous ISWO the participants talked about. It's not so much about teaching online, it's about creating an environment where people can learn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part of being a facilitator too, but it's hard to know how we tie that in when the focus really in our time together is to get people a chance to practice together in the actual active facilitation you know, trying to move people through activities and help them navigate the environment, but it's not so much on having them decide what the environment looks like. So, so maybe we need to layer it a little bit so that that um, you take an instructional skills section where you know the focus is entirely on um, facilitation, because that's a lot. That's building community, establishing teacher presence, you know, helping people with, with those kinds of issues. It's very difficult without feedback, which is great to get with your right. peers. But then how do we move to the next thing, which is um, how can they get a chance to test out design ideas that they have? Even things that we've run into in this uh, session when we're talking about how do you how do you use Web2 tools effectively? Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the groups posted a video by um, uh, Curtis Bonk where he talked about uh, what happens when you move online is the assessment possibilities change so much. Right. So when you're doing an activity now, it's not just about how do you use the tool or engage your learners? It's also about how are you going to assess that activity in a realistic way? So we touch on that a little bit, but I still think that's an area where people maybe need to practice more. So I'm just kind of trying to gel some ideas about how we might do that. Mm -hmm. And part of it might be that ongoing <clears throat> sort of professional practice idea kind mm -hmm. of thing if we stay connected. I know. Mm. Yeah. Sounds good. See how it goes. 